Welcome back. So in the previous lesson, we learned how we can load data that is in a single Excel file. So in this video, what we're going to do is learn how we can load data that is in multiple Excel files into one data frame. To accomplish this, we're going to use the read Excel function, but we're going to use some additional functions that we haven't seen before. And this will give us a chance to become familiar with those functions and then we will look at them in much more detail in future videos. So the first step is just to become familiar with exactly where our data lies. So within the data folder, there's this multiple files folder where I have split up the Airbnb data into three different data sets. And then what we're going to do is loop through these files and basically stack the data on top of each other. So the first thing is to get the names of these files. So I'm going to create a vector of the file names and I'm going to call it files. The function we're going to use here is called list.files and all it lets us do is basically specify a path for where our files are kept at. So if I just hit tab here, I'm going to get data and then multiple files. We can see all three of the files in there. But what we want to use is another argument here called pattern. And in this, I'm going to specify that all three of the files have dot xlsx in them. If you were loading, let's say CSV files, then you would just say uh, dot CSV here. So we have Excel files, so I'm going to say xlsx. If I show what this looks like, it's basically just going to be the names of the files. As we saw in the read Excel function, we also have to specify the location of where this data is kept at. So what we need to append to each of the file names is basically the location, which is the data and then the multiple files. And this is relative to where our code resides. Our code resides here. So what I'm going to do is basically just reassign files. And we're going to use a function called str underscore c, which is basically for string concatenation. And it's pretty simple. It's le it lets us do basically some type of string here. So it's going to be the data. And I'm going to hit tab, get to this multiple files. And then the other element I need to specify here is the file names themselves. So once I write here files, and I'm just going to get rid of this one and just show what this looks like. Basically, now you can see that we have the file names, but also the location of where those files are. So we're ready to basically apply the read Excel function on all of these files and get that into one data frame. So to accomplish this, we're going to use a function called mapdf, which lets us map a function to each element of the vector. So our vector is the names of the files. And then our function is the read Excel function. Now, when you load tidyverse in, this should become loaded into the system. So it's going to be basically mapdf. And here I'm going to specify this dot x that my list uh, of vectors is basically the files, or apologies, the, the vector is files. And then the function I'm going to specify is read Excel. So if I go ahead and run this, we should see the data get loaded in. And it looks pretty familiar. We have all of the rows, we have all of the columns as we've seen previously. One improvement that we could make here is to basically specify where each row comes from. So what is the source of each of the rows? Currently, all of the data is just getting loaded in and we cannot see exactly where it's coming from. But imagine if you had hundreds of files, how exactly would you trace uh, a row of the data back to its source if you found some type of error or if you wanted to fix something in the data? So it's good practice to basically provide a name to each vector. And then basically, I'm going to comment here that I'm going to provide names to each element of the vector. And then what we're going to do is use a function called names. And I would recommend to be a little bit more specific how you name them. Here, I'm just going to say that we're going to name it file one, file two, and file three. So 
let's take a look at how files looks like before we load the data in. So I'm just going to go ahead and run this. So what we've done is basically added a name to each of these files. As you can see, file one is this Airbnb New York City one, file two is this, and then file three is this. We want to be able to capture those names into a column when loading the data in. So here within MapDF, we have this other parameter called .id. And here what I'm going to do is just say that I want to add a column called source, or we can call it data source. And once I run this, we'll see that a column will now get added here, which tells us which file each row comes from. So let's just confirm that uh, all of the data gets loaded in. I need to first assign this though to a variable and I'll just run the whole chunk and then just look at the data. Going to scroll down to the bottom, make sure that we have file three there. Yep. And then we should also see file two here. So as you can see, we have all three of the files loaded in and now we can actually trace each row back to a certain location and fix any issues if we find them. So that's it for this video. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, the, the few steps can be captured as just creating a vector of the file names and then basically using the mapdf function to apply a function called read excel to each element in that vector of file names. That's it. I'll see you next time. Thank you.